Hello and welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, I built a very, very tiny Flutter app. And in this video, I want to make it available on the web. Web is one of the supported deployment channels for Flutter applications. And in this video, I will walk you end to end through the deployment in a web environment. Spoiler alert, the best way to deploy a Flutter app on the web is not a web server. It's actually a content delivery network. So in this video, I will first go through the infrastructure setup. How does the theory look like for the blueprint of that setup? And then I will walk you through it step by step on how to set up the environment on AWS and deploy the application in an AWS environment. The very first thing I need to do is to create kind of a package or the, the files I need to deploy on the web environment. So that I do in VS Code. Very, very simple. That will be a very quick one. So here I am in VS Code and I need to create the files that I need to deploy for my application. So first of all, let me clean up some title stuff here. That is still as a Flutter demo. So just cleaning up these little things. Let's have a quick look at the folder structure here. We have the main dot in the lib folder. That's basically the code that is the application. And under the build folder is where we will generate or the tool will generate the output that we need to deploy. So the command for that is flutter build web. All right, that was 20 seconds. And now we have under the build folder, a subfolder for web, and that contains everything we need to deploy. So we see it exactly at that location also in our file system. These are the files we need to deploy. Let's go through the infrastructure setup that I need to build in order to host my web environment. The first thing I need is storage environment for the files of the application. The product AWS offers to store your files and data is called S3 and the unit is a bucket. So I will set up a S3 bucket and place my application files inside that bucket. The next thing I will need is a content delivery network and the product AWS offers for that is called CloudFront and I will set up a distribution that makes the content of my bucket available on the internet. So I will set up a CloudFront distribution that points to that bucket and makes everything in that bucket available if the access is per uh, permitted. Now, the other thing that CloudFront does for me is to secure the access. So an S3 bucket is purely a storage container and it does do some permission handling. So for example, I can restrict access to only this CloudFront dist distribution. What it does not do is uh, securing the connection. So this connection is not encrypted. I want access from the internet, of course, to be encrypted by SSL. And that is a function that is handled by CloudFront. In order to do that, of course, I need a certificate. So the first thing I need to do to set this up is to get a certificate to make it available in the CloudFront distribution. So I will go to the certificate manager and request a certificate for the location I will distribute my content in. And the last step I need to do is to make it available at a certain location. So for that, I will use a subdomain in a domain that I already own and need to configure that in a domain name server to point to this CloudFront distribution. The main DNS system that AWS offers is called Route 53. But in my case, I'm actually hosting the domain on a LightSail instance. So LightSail has a small DNS capability as well. So I need to configure my DNS on LightSail in this case. So it really depends where is your domain hosted. That's where you need to configure everything regarding that domain. What I have to do here is to set up a CNAME uh, rule on that domain to uh, configure the subdomain that I will use 
to be fed by that CloudFront distribution that I'm setting up here. For every incoming connection, CloudFront will use the certificate that is provided for this distribution. So what are the steps that I need to do in AWS to set up all this? The first thing I need to do is I need to define the subdomain first. I give, need to give it a name basically. Uh, that must be step one because this name is required to configure the bucket accordingly as well as a certi certificate for this subdomain. For this demo, I will set up the subdomain ABC in my domain whosaround.com. It's just for the demo purpose and I will remove all this afterwards. Now the second thing is I need to create the storage bucket with exactly this name. Step three is to request a certificate for this subdomain, which is not covered by the main domain name here. Once I have the certificate and the storage bucket, I can create the distribution in my content delivery network. And once all this is done, I can set up the DNS to point to that distribution. And of course, to make the application available, I need to place the files into that bucket. And the very last step is of course to test and make sure everything end to end works as it should. And that's it. So let's go through it in the console one by one. So here I logged into my AWS console. I'm in S3 and I will now set up the storage bucket. The name of the bucket must be exactly the name of the subdomain, otherwise it will not be working end to end. I have to disable the block all public access because I need to give it public access to make it available on the net. And here I have my bucket created. So that's step one is done. Step two is to create the certificate. So I need to go to the certificate manager for which I have already a shortcut here. And I need to select Northern Virginia, US East one as the location. That is the master for a lot of things within the AWS cloud, and it will be distributing these certificates to other locations. If you set up your certificate in a different location, you will not be able to use it uh, for the CloudFront distribution. So I request a public certificate and I use it only for one subdomain here. I use DNS validation. That means I will probably have to configure a rule in my DNS server to uh, activate the certificate to show, to prove that I have access to this domain, that I own this domain. And here I have the new certificate status pending validation. And when I go back to that certificate, I see nothing here. So I probably have to go in again. And now I see here a C name and a C value. And this is exactly what I need to configure in my DNS to confirm to validate the certificate. Now, if my domain is hosted with route 53, I can just create the uh, create records in route 53 button and then it will pick up these rules and the validation of the certificate will be completed. In my case, that my domain is hosted in LightSail, so I have to set up this rule manually in LightSail. So I go to networking, my DNS zone for this domain, and I create a new record, CNAME record, and I copy paste the name. I need to remove the end and also copy the value. and set up that rule in my DNS. 
Now this is hanging, but I can actually show that the rule is there. And here it it is already. Maps to underscore two two. Right now, when I go back to my certificate manager, it the validation should be happening already. So let's validate this. And the status of that certificate is already issued. So even though they claim it might take up to 24 hours, it's actually typically really, really fast. So now I have the certificate, I have the bucket. Next thing is I can set up the distribution in CloudFront. So I create a new distribution. I can select my bucket for that one. The access will be public. And I want to redirect all HTTP requests to HTTPS. So that way, if you open a non-secure connection, it will automatically be redirected and a SSL connection will be set up. Now, caching is an extremely important feature why I use a CloudFront distribution in the first place. So it will be caching the files in edge locations. Uh, so I use optimized caching here, standard functionality. I add the alternate domain name for this distribution. And I select the certificate that I just created. As a default root object, I set index.html. And I give it a description. and create my distribution. So the status is deploying and this might actually take a few minutes to deploy it to distribute it across the different locations. Now while my distribution is deploying across the locations, I will transfer the files into my S3 bucket. So here I have my empty bucket that I just created. And with upload, I can drag and drop files and folders just here. So that's really the easiest way to get files in. So under build web, I have the files that I need. I see here the index.html, which is the main file of the application, which ties in all the other ones. So I just take these files, drag them into this area, upload. And it's done. Now I select these files and make them public. Otherwise, there's no access to these files. Now that's done as well. Let's go back to the CloudFront distribution and see how that is doing. OK, now it's done. The distribution is available. Last step is I need to make this distribution available under the uh, name under that subdomain name. So now I go back to my light sale where I configure the rules for my DNS. I copy paste the name of this distribution and I create a new CNAME record and it will map to this distribution and under ABC. This distribution, of course, is just the name without the protocol and create. So that's it. Next step, step seven in our list, 
to test the whole setup. And this is exactly what I see here, abc.whosaround.com. And I see the lock, so it has been redirected to a secure connection. And this is the demo app that I created in my previous video. So that's how quick and easy it is to deploy a web application to the AWS cloud. The setup here is serverless. That means you do not introduce a bottleneck of having your own web server. It's really scalable and it's already distributed in a cached environment across all edge locations. So it's low latency, highly scalable. We have security with the SSL certificate in place and it's very, very cheap because you don't have to pay for a server. Basically the only cost that occurs to you is for the domain itself and there's not really a way around that one. So if this video was any helpful for you, please leave a like and a comment below and follow my channel if you want to see more content like this.